guys, today we're doing a GMBR. Um, this one, we're gonna talk about the boost controlling device we made uh, a while back. It's basically a spring gate. And I said it works really good, so we're gonna show you guys. Um, well, two main tests. First of all, we're gonna do a zero to 60. Um, then we're going to do a 1500 RPM pull in fourth gear. Now, the zero to 60, there's not a whole lot of detailed information you can get out of there um, as far as like just scrutinizing the data that we're going to get at and we're going to look at the computer later on. Not a whole lot. That's mostly eye candy. Um, then the 1500 RPM pull may be a little boring to look at, but it is data packed for when we go to the computer. So, um, first of all, there's a couple things you, different uh, things that you want to look at when you're designing a boost controller, you're picking a boost controller, different aspects of them. Uh, the first one is very obvious. We need to be able to hit the desired boost we're looking for. Uh, obviously, we're, we're running a stock HX35, so we're looking for 35 pounds of boost. Um, the next thing is how linear that boost is to RPM. Um, ideally, it would be a flat line. So 35 pounds at 2,500, all right. 35 pounds at 2,000 RPM and 35 pounds at 3,000 RPM. You want a flat line. That's ideal, but it's not typically the case. But we want to see how much it strays from that flat line. Another thing is overshoot. We don't want, I, it's probably not that big a deal, but I just don't like watching the boost go way up to 40 pounds before it's leveling off at 35 again. Um, that may not be that big a deal, but I don't like it. Okay, and so then, Last thing is, when does that wastegate actuator start to actually crack open? Because the sooner it cracks open, the slower the spool up is going to be. Because once it starts cracking open, then you're pumping away drive pressure that otherwise be used to get that turbo spinning faster. And that's what we want. When we're spooling turbos, we're trying to get as much volume through that turbo, or is that through that turbine as possible. So if you're wasting, wasting away by opening up the exhaust, or opening up the wastegate, it's wasted, quite literally. Um, so, uh, we're gonna first, we're gonna do a zero to 60 run. Obviously, this is not a very safe place to do it. And typically, you have to be stopped for a zero to 60 run. So, we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna do a 1500 RPM pull. Okay, we're doing a zero to 60 here. It's actually gonna be a zero to 55, but pretty close. Um, we're gonna start in second gear. I'm not gonna launch it that hard because I really don't wanna roast tires or clutch at the moment. So, um, here we go. Stop. Here we go. I want to do that to calibrate the gauges. Here we go. get used to the uh, G56 and uh, the clutch but the information is all there you can still look at the boost and see if you watch for any overshooting we'll be looking at the information here in a bit next off 1500 rpm pull basically what we're going to do is we go below 14 1500 creep up to 15 that way we're still accelerating slightly which uh, helps get rid of the slack in the drive line so we don't just mash all that slack Hey guys, here we got the zero to 60 run. A couple of cool things here I want to point out, but we'll do that a little later. One thing I want to mention really quick is that we disabled the QSV. Uh, reason for that is that it really makes, wrecks have it with the drive pressure. So trying to get a nice clean graph like this, you wouldn't be able to do that with the QSV on because it would constantly be opening and closing at each shift, which just makes the drive pressure go all over the place. And then with it opening and closing really quick, that messes with the wastegate, which then would basically ruin our testing of the how well the spring gate works. But we're gonna, for now, we're going to stick with the original topic of the spring gate. Um, not a whole lot to see. You can't, the main thing is that um, boost did get to our desired level, and there was no overshooting. Um, we got plenty of boost here in second gear. I mean, we only achieved about 28 pounds, 
not a whole lot, but you can't do much in second gear. RPMs increase so quickly that there's just not much to be had. Um, we got 33 and we got 34 and a half. That's pretty good. Not complaining at all. And we don't have any overshooting. So now we're going to go to the 1500 RPM run and we're going to look at it. Again, no overshooting, so that's cool. Um, we have those four things we were looking at. We're going to, did it achieve our boost? Yes, it did. Did it uh, overshoot? No, it did not. So far, so good. Uh, then we have uh, how linear the boost is with RPM. You can see, got up to 35.2, and it went by 3,000 RPM, it went down to 32.3. That's about a three PSI drop. While it's not optimal, that's pretty. That's still pretty good. Um, there's some boost controlling devices that actually go up. Boost will go up as RPM increases, and that's that. You don't want that because as RPMs go up, flow goes up, and when you push a turbo out of its map, there's two ways to do that. A lot of pressure and a lot of flow. So if boost or pressure increases as flow also increases, that's bad. So if you're trying to go for turbo life, this setup would actually work really well because you're gonna drop that boost a little bit at high RPM, which would help keep that turbo alive. Okay, so then the last thing we got is um, when does that wastegate flapper open? Now, here we can see the ramp up of boost. We got a nice, smooth, clean line. That is a nice straight line up until approximately right here. Now, I do have, uh, my AFC has a dual spring setup that is made to be a little more uh, stingy with the fuel, past about 20 pounds. So um, it helps me keep that low RPM torque, like this keeps torque out of the low RPM, which would kill transmissions and stuff and clutches and whatnot. So that could be just from that taking over. But uh, we do know that this being as steep a ramp as it is, the wastegate for sure did not open until at least 29.3 pounds. So that's really good. Here you can see um, something cool, how the data logs are all wanky right here. We got a little bit of a half a PSI fluctuation. Reason that is, and actually you can see it in the drive pressure here as well, that is the wastegate trying to find the equilibrium. So right here, you know it's open. And right here, we know it's closed. So it's opening somewhere right here, and that's really good. I mean, we're above 30 pounds of boost. So really happy with that. And another thing with this setup is that because it's drive pressure referenced, that'll actually start to open sooner at higher PM, which um, for a towing setup, that works really well. I'm Like I say, I'm really happy with how the spring gate works. I mean, you can't really ask for a whole lot more. Now, what we can do is we can look at the... Uh, Series 60 run here really quick. I just want to point out a couple things. Okay, here we got our botched shift. And uh, yeah, there's a couple things you can see here. First of all, we got peak here. This is red lines miles per hour. Peak here is about 21.9 miles an hour. But down here, we're at 16.7. So that means is we're getting about five miles an hour of wheel spin, just over five miles an hour wheel spin. And then combine that with the fact that I shifted a little early. You can see I was at 28 miles an hour, uh, 2800 RPM. Should have shipped it up here somewhere because of all that wheel spin. What those two things did to me first, because the G56 shift six shifts as fast as it does, a lot of that is because of the gear splits. So by having that wheel spin, we just mess with the gear splits, which makes it take a lot longer to shift. And we'll see that in a bit. And uh, because of that, again, we got down to 13.1374 RPM here so we had to re-spool everything we got the boost went down to six pounds 6.8 pounds or so uh, 5.7 pounds so we had to re-spool everything get it going you can see if we look at the miles per hour here you can kind of see how everything happened here we have where we hit the clutch that was at 1.2 seconds then at 2.2 seconds we start to accelerate again so we basically took one second to go from clutch to accelerate so that, that's one, one second there. Then we have this ramp up where we're having to spool the turbos again, or turbo, turbo again. So that's pretty crap. So it took about another half a second or so to get full on acceleration. Now here we have a shift that was a little better. I still messed up on it a little bit. So let's look at it. First of all, um, here we have where we stopped accelerating. Then we have where we um, hit the, we let out the clutch what this did was it by, okay, so we hit the clutch here, then we lay out the clutch here. What that did was it dropped the RPM. It brought that RPM way down to where to match the, uh, 
and transmission input shaft again, and which in other words are wheels. So you can see we got a bunch of acceleration right there. However, apparently I didn't hit the throttle till somewhere right, let's see, 6.2 miles, 6.2 seconds into our run. I didn't hit the throttle till right there-ish. So um, I was a little, there was a little bit of much of a delay there with hitting the throttle. I should have hit a little sooner, but we still hit a six, we still hit 60 miles an hour, approximately nine and a half seconds or so. Um, obviously right here, it shows that we're at just coming off zero here, but that's not gonna be completely accurate as there's a little bit of delay um, in the data logger, but still not too bad. Like always guys, thanks for watching.